Hey, welcome back to Ragtops and Roadsters Project Coombs. If you've seen the first two episodes, you know that we picked up this 1961 Jaguar Mark II sedan as a shop project so that we could walk you through the process of completing a full restoration on a classic vehicle. In the last episode, we determined that this car is indeed a suitable candidate for a second life based on a largely visual evaluation. The overall condition of the car, however rough it may appear to the casual observer, is actually quite solid. We found some minor body damage that certainly wasn't too hard to spot, uh, along with modest and totally predictable degree of rust in the usual places. Since then, we've dug in a little deeper and begun disassembling the car bit by bit. At this phase of a project, our technicians spent a lot of time documenting the parts and trim coming off the car, labeling and grouping them for storage until they're needed later, and taking a lot of photographs of little things like um, the exact placement or assembly details of certain components for future reference when we go to put the car back together, which if we're being honest, could be months, maybe even a year from now. As you can see, we've removed virtually all of the interior at this point, except for some of the dashboard and the headliner. The highlight of this interior was no doubt the, all the gorgeous wood trim that was in it. And thankfully it appears we have all of the pieces and they're actually in relatively good shape given the age. Now, we carefully removed each one of these delicate parts, many of which are fastened to the body with the smallest of trim screws. And while we'll probably replace all of the hardware with brand new stuff, uh, we're keeping the originals for reference for now, just in case. You can see we removed all of the seats as well, and they're in much worse condition. In fact, sections of the leather are missing in some places entirely, and the exposed seating foam is disintegrating in our hands as we were uh, simply removing them from the car. You may have noticed that along with all of the exterior trim, we also took off the Wabasto cloth sunroof. After a closer look, we found that the main assembly was actually in really good shape, uh, all things considered. It looks to have been installed when the car was new, and even the wooden uh, reinforcements underneath the sheet metal look to be in fair to great shape, actually. Despite what we said in the earlier episodes, uh, we think we're actually gonna keep the Wabasto roof and go ahead and restore it as well. With all of the carpet out of the car, we were able to get a better look at the sheet metal in the floors and other lower areas, including the trunk. Thankfully, all of this looks to be in really solid shape for a 60 plus year old car. Finally, our technician Pat was able to hand crank the engine to ensure it turns freely, which it certainly does. Uh, that's always a good sign. And also confirm that it has both uh, oil pressure and compression, which are both uh, looking good at this point. Now we'll do a more thorough compression test uh, on that later on each cylinder, uh, but for now the engine, which the previous owner had uh, claimed he had had rebuilt, looks to be at least as healthy as the rest of the car, if not more so. We'll still tear down the engine ourselves to confirm that all is healthy on the uh, inside, and we'll replace all the gaskets and seals as well, which by now are at least 12 years old, if not older. Nevertheless, there's a good chance this one won't have to go out for any major machine work. We clearly still have more stripping to do, but the next step will be assessing which parts can be and should be saved, which ones aren't worth refinishing, and determining if anything is made of unobtainium. From there, we can plan the next phases of work in sequence based on how long each uh, operation will take, as well as what has to happen before something else can happen. For all you project management types, you'll know this better as your dependencies. It's very likely the wood trim will be sent out first for reveneering and refinishing. This is an operation we don't currently do in-house. We use the services of a highly trained uh, team of craftsmen uh, to make the necessary repairs and to refinish the trim to a like new uh, appearance. But we're far from their only client. We know it's gonna take time once uh, they have that for them to do it. So it's better for us to get ahead of that now in the process than to find out later that, um, th that it's gonna be a delay because of uh, the refinishing. If we decide we'd rather refinish the chrome trim than to replace it, we'd also want to send that out fairly early. There are fewer and fewer good plating operations out there these days, and we know from experience it can take uh, months, many months, sometimes a year or more, uh, to get good quality chrome replated. Now, with this project being a Jaguar, uh, there are companies out there that produce kits for the seats and upholstery, but we're lucky to have an in-house upholsterer that can pattern, cut, and sew a whole new interior from scratch. We'll work on getting him the correct materials, in this case, lots of red leather, vinyl, and carpet, and put him to work making new pieces on his own. In the next episode, 
we'll break down the project plan for you. For now, thanks for checking back in with us. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Ragtops and Roasters on YouTube to get alerts when new episodes of this series are released. And as always, let's keep those old cars on the road. Thanks.